With butter and margarine, the key is using them in small amounts. Butter is a source of saturated fat. You can choose to pick butter if you keep the portions small. If you prefer margarine, pick one that is free of partially hydrogenated oil, like Promise or Smart Balance. With sour cream, in picking a sour cream, you can use a regular version if you plan on using a tablespoon in your food. If you prefer more than that, go with a light or a fat-free version, such as this or this. I sometimes use a few tablespoons of plain yogurt as an alternative to sour cream. Contrary to what quite a few think, sour cream is not a good source of calcium. About cream cheese, if you plan on using cream cheese in lesser amounts and prefer the taste of regular cream cheese, then go with regular cream cheese. If you know that you're going to use it more often and use more than a tablespoon on your bread or in a recipe, then you can go with a whipped variety or a light variety or a fat-free variety. As with sour cream, cream cheese is not a good source of calcium. If you drink alcohol, try to limit syrupy drinks or drinks involving juice or soda. Not sticking to proper portions and going for those sweet and syrupy drinks can cause blood sugars to rise as well as the calories. For example, a standard size tequila sunrise contains around 200 calories, 14 grams of alcohol, and 25 grams of sugar. Some bars promote mixed drinks in souvenir cups with double those numbers. In comparison, a light beer contains around 100 calories, sometimes less, 12 grams of alcohol, and 7 grams of carbohydrate. Four ounces of table wine contains around 85 calories, 11 grams of alcohol, and 3 grams of carbohydrates, and one shot of 80 proof hard liquor, such as tequila, contains around 65 calories, 9.5 grams of alcohol, and zero carbohydrates. If you drink regularly, drink in moderation to prevent risk to your health. Moderation is considered no more than one drink a day for women and no more than two drinks a day for men. One drink is equal to 12 ounces of beer, 5 ounces of wine, or 1.5 ounces of 80 proof hard alcohol. Drinks in these portion sizes include around 14 grams of alcohol. Drinking more than moderation at one time is harmful to your health, so to answer a very popular question, no, you cannot bank up all the drinks allowed for one day and enjoy them on a Friday or a Saturday. If you are living with diabetes, make sure you consult your doctor and or pharmacist before drinking as it can dangerously lower blood sugars and might not be allowed when taking certain medications. If you are able to drink, drink after having some food or a snack and never drink on an empty stomach. About frozen meals, for many, frozen meals are used for their convenience. Depending on your calorie needs, it would be good to check out the calories, total fat content, and whether they contain whole grains and how much sodium they have, as frozen foods can be high in salt. For example, if somebody was advised to stick to 30 grams of carbohydrate per meal and picked up a frozen meal with 10 grams of carbohydrate, they may need to add some whole wheat bread or fruit on the side. Here are two examples. This is a spa cuisine from the makers of Lean Cuisine. Spa cuisine is advertised as including a whole grain in the meal. Here is Hungry Man Dinner. Let's look at the nutrition information for both products. So this Lean Cuisine has a total of four grams of fat, one gram of saturated fat, 590 milligrams of sodium, which isn't too bad, 
32 grams of total carbohydrate, which includes 6 grams of fiber, and 19 grams of protein. Now let's have a look at the hungry man. In comparison, you'll find 35 grams of total fat. Total carbohydrate, 107 grams. You'll find 6 grams of dietary fiber, 26 grams of protein, and I almost forgot the sodium but I left it for the end because you'll find a whopping 1,920 milligrams of sodium. Looking at the nutrition information of frozen foods gives you a good idea of what you may find in your restaurant foods as many of the food items are delivered to the restaurants partially cooked or frozen. We all scream for ice cream, right? And there are so many desserts to choose from in the frozen section, including sugar-free, fat-free, light, reduced fat, carb smart. It's enough to make you feel pretty overwhelmed. If you pick up a sugar-free or carb smart product, most likely they will contain sugar alcohol and may or may not be high in fat. Here are two examples where one is low in fat and one is high in fat. Use your label savvy to investigate. Your fat-free, light, and reduced fat varieties of ice creams will most likely have sugar as the main ingredient. So what's the best choice? It all depends on your needs. If you have diabetes, desserts with regular sugar may result in a spike in blood sugar even when consumed after a meal or in a small portion. So you may want to opt for sugar-free varieties or the carb smart variety. If you have diabetes and heart disease, you may want to opt for a sugar-free, fat-free variety of ice cream such as this one. If you refuse to eat anything but good old regular ice cream, maybe avoid having a gallon of it in your freezer and go out every now and then for one scoop of ice cream. Since pasta is an American favorite, let's look at some pasta sauces. Tomatoes are a great source of vitamin A, vitamin C, and lycopene, which is good for men's health. One thing you need to be aware of is the sugar you may find in tomato, pizza, and pasta sauce. A general guideline is to pick one with no more than 5 grams of sugar per serving. Here are a few brands that fit the bill, and here is one that absolutely does not fit the bill. According to the diabetes exchange lists, a free food is any food or drink that contains less than 20 calories and less than or equal to 5 grams of carbohydrate per serving. These foods or ingredients don't affect blood sugar. Examples of free foods or ingredients include but are not limited to sugar-free jello, sugar-free popsicles, sugar-free jelly, sugar-free hard candies, diet soda or flavored water, unsweetened iced tea, and fat-free whipped topping. What are some examples of foods that are not free and why? Sugar-free pudding and sugar-free cookies. Both contain carbohydrates and can raise blood sugars if not consumed as part of a balanced snack or after a balanced meal. Also, carb smart ice cream and sugar-free Dove chocolate. Notice the carbs are low, but the calories, specifically the calories from fat, are high. Let's talk about what to drink. Your best option is filtered water. We need water and cannot survive without it. Water flushes away toxins, aids in weight loss, keeps us hydrated, prevents kidney stones, and eases arthritis, among other things. For a change, herbal tea and decaffeinated teas are a nice option, as some, like green tea, carry health benefits. And if you need to, you can add some artificial sweetener for some sweetness without the carbs. Adding some carb-free flavored powder to your water or sparkling water is another alternative. On that note, 
Use products with artificial sweetener like Splenda, Equal, and Sweet and Low in moderation. Also, limit the caffeine in your diet as high amounts can affect your health or follow your doctor's orders in regard to caffeine use. Considering that it is best to keep your food items as close to nature as possible, it is preferable to choose plain, filtered water. In talking about a dietitian's best friend, vegetables, include them, specifically non-starchy vegetables, liberally in your diet as they are rich in water, vitamins, fiber, minerals, and antioxidants as well as low in sugar. Just as you did with fruit, think color and variety when picking your vegetables. Try to regularly include dark green and dark yellow vegetables in your diet such as spinach, romaine, broccoli, carrots, and peppers. They are good sources of vitamin A and vitamin C. You can use vegetables such as Brussels sprouts, lettuces, cauliflower, my favorite artichokes, asparagus, onions, and green beans liberally as they have little effect on blood sugars. Include vegetables like beets, carrots, and tomatoes, but watch that you don't overdo it as they do contain some natural sugar. Now I'd like to talk about some misconceptions about organic foods and natural foods. Let's have a look at these so-called natural drinks. One is a smoothie drink, one is an acai juice blend, and this one is a pomegranate juice. This smoothie drink contains 70 grams of sugar, which is equal to 17 teaspoons of sugar. So you'll get a good source of vitamin C and protein and a good spike in your blood sugar. This acai juice blend contains 32 grams of sugar, which is equivalent to eight teaspoons of sugar. And this pomegranate juice has the equivalent of 16 teaspoons of sugar. When you're living with diabetes, it's very important to ignore the advertisements on the bottles and packages and look straight to the food label. This applies to every item in the store and includes the organic and natural foods as well. Your organic food may be free of pesticides and hormones, but may have a ton of organic sugar or organic cane juice. Your diabetes does not differentiate between regular or organic sugar, just as high blood pressure does not differentiate between sea salt and regular old table salt. Thank you for joining me today on this video supermarket tour. I hope that this has been helpful in educating you to make healthy choices when doing your grocery shopping. I want to give special thanks to Glendora Vons for letting us host this special tour in their beautiful store. If you are interested in joining me for a live supermarket tour or are interested in diabetes education, please call the Center for Diabetes Education at Foothill Presbyterian Hospital at 626-857-3477 or on the web at cvhpdiabetes.org.